number of years ago, there was a movement that called itself Saving Jesus. These were liberal-minded Christians who wanted to reclaim the religion and image of Jesus from what they saw as a reactionary, fundamentalist Christian right. They feared that too much emphasis had been placed on personal salvation and not enough on the teachings of Jesus that called for creating a socially just world. They asked, ever feel like Jesus has been kidnapped by the Christian right and discarded by the secular left? One of their proponents, the progressive Christian minister, Reverend Robin Myers, offered these prophetic words more than 10 years ago. Everybody knows something is wrong. It doesn't matter if you talk to liberals, conservatives, Unitarians, or Pentecostals. Do you think we're on the right track? No. Are you worried? Yes. Our society has divided itself into camps and we're all warring against each other. We're not talking to each other. We're not listening to each other. We're hunkering down, circling the wagons, and lobbing shells at one another. That has no future, he said. I'd like to believe that he's right, that there's no future in these divisions, but the divide has grown even wider since those words were written. Is it irreparable? I don't know. But one way to fight fundamentalism is to be armed with literacy and wisdom. We have the freedom to draw upon a wide range of wisdom sources for inspiration, yet we lose a powerful tool when we leave out Christian teachings as one of our options. Our challenge is to claim our roots, to take what we need and put it into its historical context. Much of what we can learn from Jesus is found in his parables. These are stories that speak of a radical vision of society that is more than just turning the other cheek. The project of the parables of Jesus was to get people talking, to throw them off balance, to get them thinking and questioning. In other words, his teachings were intentionally meant as paradox. And here's one example. The parable of the laborers in the vineyard found in the Gospel of Matthew, a story that t Jesus tells to his disciples. Here's how it goes. A landowner goes to the marketplace to hire some laborers to work in his vineyard. He goes twice in the morning, again at noon and at five o'clock, each time to hire more workers. When he asks the five o'clock group why they have been standing idle all day, they respond because no one has hired us. At the end of the day, the landowner instructs his manager to pay the workers their wages, beginning with the last and then going to the first. Of course, those who work all day grumble bitterly. Why are they being paid the same amount as those who worked for only an hour? This is unjust and unfair. The landowner responds, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Are you envious because I am generous? So says Jesus to his disciples. The last will be the first, and the first will be the last.